Minutes ago, this was a catwalk where models showed off the latest collections at London Fashion Week. Fashion is a fast-paced and fast-changing business. I caught up with Carolyn Rush, the chief executive of the British Fashion Council, and Imran Ahmed, who writes a blog, The Business of Fashion, to find out where the global industry is headed. Lovely to speak to you both. Let me start with you, Caroline. It's raining here. <laughs> Welcome to London. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little cold. What draws sort of 5,000 attendees from all around the world to come to London Fashion Week? Well, as you said, this is London Fashion Week and this is the showcase of the very best of British fashion and design. And uh, these people that you see um, maybe in the background here are uh, media, retailers, stylists. Uh, so they're industry people who are here to see the collections and then be able to take that out to the world, whether it's through uh, imagery, uh, looking and contextualising the collection uh, and hopefully buying the collection so that it will then be in store in six months' time. It run. With all of the technology, you can watch these fashion shows online. Why come here to London Fashion Week? Right. I think there's, you know, even with the digital revolution and, you know, the power of technology to bring shows into everyone's homes, I think there's still something really special about being at the place where it all happens. And London in particular is known for creativity and quirkiness. and being a bit bold with ideas. Um, in other cities, I think, you know, sometimes it's a bit safe. And you, you, we would never accuse the designers and fashion community in London for being safe. So I think it's a bit about the boldness as well. Is that your take as well, Caroline? There's something distinctive about British designers and the training, perhaps, of British designers who then go work in other markets. There is. I think when you talk to the audiences that come to London, they come for the creativity. And we're known for having the best fashion colleges in the world. Um, and these fashion colleges are art colleges. Central St. Martins is an art college, as is the Royal College of Art. And so fashion is um, taught as an art form. And that's where this creativity comes from, because that's the starting point of the collection. Uh, it's great to see how that's then taken into commerce. And that's where sort of the challenges in the past the British fashion industry has seen um, but we're starting to be able to overcome those challenges now and uh, make more commercial successes. So there's great opportunity and great growth in British fashion at the moment. Mm -hmm. Imran, do you agree that there's great growth is in this industry and do you see it in terms of export or influence perhaps? Yeah, I mean the fashion industry touches literally everybody around the world from you know, the high street to the high end. And when we explore and think about the business of fashion, we include everything in it. And so I think that you know, in, in the past you know, decade, we've seen the fashion industry become a bigger part of popular culture. And I think that's driven a lot of interest in fashion, but it's also driven the growth of the industry. You know, the fashion industry for a really long time was this exclusive little group that traveled around and you know, Fashion Week was this kind of secret but with technology, with the internet, with live streaming, with social media, all of a sudden, you know, the man on the street, the woman on the street, they can participate in Fashion Week too. And I think this accessibility or democratization of fashion has really made it, you know, a, like a popular part of popular culture. I was struck by the figures released by your council that the fashion industry is twice as big as car manufacturing in Britain. How important is fashion to the economy? It's hugely important to the British economy. Um, it's taken quite a while for us to help get the message across that this isn't uh, just about a dress or just about a show. And I think people look at a fashion and sometimes think it is maybe a little bit frivolous. But behind it is that there are jobs, there's opportunity, particularly in the UK, it's an incredibly dynamic industry, but globally it is as well. And we contribute 26 billion each year to the British economy. Um, so it's not to be sniffed at, it's certainly one to be taken seriously. There are many challenges in the industry and certainly we would like to be able to work um, more hand in hand with our government to be able to help address some of those challenges. What are some of the challenges that you're most um, worried about? 
Well, I think it's the opportunity for um, for homegrown talent to be able to grow. Small businesses uh, generally in the UK do have challenges here. But when you look at the manufacturing and textile side, we have great heritage in that, particularly on the textiles. Um, but it's about attracting people into jobs. It's about being able to have skilled labour here. And one of the things we're going to be looking at in the next few months is what we could do maybe, what interventions would be possible to help support the high-end design and manufacturing to grow grow in the UK rather to continually diminish. Yeah, I see you nodding there. I mean, it's a tough competitive business, isn't it? Fashion making it. Yeah, I mean, about 95% of fashion startups will fold in the first five years. So this is a competitive industry. And, you know, as Caroline says, it's not just about the glamour and flash bulbs and, and the models and photographers. You know, there's an, it's a highly operational, detail-oriented business. In order for some of these young designers to succeed, you know, they're shipping to 30 or 40 or 50 countries around the world. They're sourcing their fabrics and materials from, you know, from India and from Italy and from France. You know, it's a, it's a complex business to manage. And in order to be successful, you have to not only have, you know, great creativity and great ideas and great imagery, but you also have to have the operations, the manufacturing, the investment, the marketing, the sales, the logistics, all of that has to come together. So fashion's a lot more than an art form. You know, there's creativity in it. But at the end of the day, it's a business. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's the message I think that sometimes is lost um, because of the way the fashion industry is often portrayed is as a frivolous industry where people drink champagne and go to parties. But let me tell you, I mean, there's people working very hard in this industry, packing boxes, you know, or organizing shipments, um, doing all of the little details that happen behind the scenes that make the industry tick. And we can't forget about that as mm -hmm. well. What are the challenges and opportunities for the industry? Well, at the moment we have uh, representatives from over 60 countries that come to London Fashion Week. But through the live streaming, and we're live streaming 43 out of uh, 79 shows and presentations this season, um, last season reached 160 different countries. And so it'll be interesting to see with more live streaming if that continues to grow. And um, the great thing about seeing it digitally is you can see the number of people that are looking at it, how long they're looking at it for, and really start to see trends in different markets that are taking an interest in British fashion. Uh, the traditional markets of the US, of Central Europe, um, and of course, increasingly Asia, are very strong for British businesses. Um, but we see a lot of interest from all over the world and often some of these smaller businesses will have international retailers before they have British ones. Oh, oh interesting. Why is that? Well, the, this is a global industry and quite often the concept stores from Tokyo, from the US, from Germany, uh, from Italy will come and really identify with a young brand before they've started their relationships with the British retailers. Um, and it's those first relationships which are incredibly important because that's where they learn about the industry, the younger brands. And it's great having a partner, particularly an international partner, who can help you understand uh, what it's like to grow a business on an international scale. Go. Mm, interesting. What about you, Imran? What are the future trends for this industry? Well, there's a lot of things that are driving and shaping the industry right now. I think, you know, technology is, has made the industry more accessible and it will start impacting the way things are produced. You have issues around sustainability and ethics because consumers are much more concerned about and aware about how things are made, where things are made, who makes them. But I think the one thing that will never change in the fashion industry and something that I think um, is really what makes, makes this industry so exciting is that you know, regardless of trends in technology or consumer behavior, what's always going to be important is the creativity. You know, this is an industry that without the creative side, without these incredible people that drive the industry, we would have nothing to sell. So as much as you know, fashion is a, a global industry and a global business, it remains a very creative one. And so whatever happens with the future, you know, creativity will always be the lifeblood of fashion. When you first started and you joined the industry, if you cast your mind back, what most surprised you about the fashion industry? 
don't think anyone really understands is how committed the individuals in the industry are, is that there's a huge amount of passion about the sector um, and people work incredibly hard, is that I think as an outsider you look at a show and you assume that it's a short day. People work long hours, are very committed, but are committed because they're committed to perfection and excellence and um, that's when you see that executed well, that's when you know that either from a designer perspective or an events or marketing or brand perspective then you're doing a good job. Mm. Hey Brian. Yeah, I really have to agree with that. I mean, I came into the fashion industry from the glamorous world of management consulting. So all of this was, all of this was really interesting and new to me, um, obviously on the surface. But what really struck me was when I started meeting the people who work in fashion, and you know, on all sides of fashion, the business side, the operational side, the creative side. People don't come into the fashion industry because they want to become rich. You know, people come to the fashion industry because they have a shared, real passionate interest in, in the industry. And you know, some people will go off and become very, very wealthy and become very successful. But what draws people together is this shared interest. And you know, that's why I think of the fashion industry as more of a community. Everybody's connected somehow by this shared interest. So, um, you know, effectively, Fashion Week is like the world's most glamorous trade conference. And you know, as we're sitting in those rows, or you know, sitting in the backs of cars, um, business is being done, deals are being made, conversations are being had, and that that's what continues to propel the industry forward. Great note to end on. Thank you both very much indeed. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Fashion has always been a global business, more so now than ever before. The internet means we can all have front row seats to the catwalk shows. But it also means that it's a challenging business to attract the attention of customers. That's all we have time for this week. Check out our website and me on Twitter. I'm at Linda Yu. And join me next week for more Talking Business with me, Linda Yu.